This is the January 2nd, 2024 meeting of the Recycling Committee. Present in the room is Jean landis Norman, Vanessa Vicotti, uh, David O'Connell, and our Mac um, podcast. On the phone, we have Jean Wyatt. Time is. Okay. Hey, good morning, everyone. Good Happy New Year. Good New Year. God asked me how I how my holidays went. I said I'm glad you're over. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that awful? Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I moved the bar so low it was nice. It was okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. Okay, so this meeting is being recorded by PAC TV. Anyone intending to make an audio or video recording of this meeting should notify the chair at this time. And I don't see anyone online. Uh, we do have Jean uh, Wyatt with us by phone. Jean, you can hear us all right? Yes. Okay. All right, the first order of business is to approve the minutes of December 5th. Uh, Vanessa just handed those out. Uh, if you take a minute, um, she had sent them out before and we found a couple things that needed to be um, replaced and placed where they should be, right? Yes, yeah. <laughs> bopping all over the place. So I, I the last paragraph, Mm -hmm. on the last page is in bold because I didn't really get what that conversation was about. <laughs> and I don't know that that's what we want to include or where we were going with that, or we just take that No, that's out. fine. But, so I'll take the bold away, but does, because I ended up having to research what we were even talking about because it, in context it didn't make any sense. Um, let me see, what did we do with this card? <clears throat> I think it's attached to here. It is Goldman Environmental Consultants. Yeah, it is what it's called, mm -hmm. and then I wasn't sure how we were bringing that in to be relevant to something um, it was just for information sake. Okay. That's what the company does, but I wasn't sure. I don't know, Todd, had you brought it up? Which no, the, I oh, did. You have the minutes, right? Yeah. And we're just looking at that last paragraph before mark your calendar, before adjourn. I know, I'm looking at it. I. That wasn't it. part of what Todd said, but that was something that I reported. I had a Oh, discussion with Brian Dunn. Okay, and I hadn't even put Brian in here. Yeah. I did talk to him, by the way. Call me back. I did. Okay. All right, I put Brian's name back in here. Well, you said it's above your pay grade. Right? I can't do much about it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It doesn't have anything to do with me, so. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't really sure how it was relevant, except that Brian worked for them. Uh, it, except that um, he was interested in talking to us about putting one here. Putting onto our agenda to come and talk. Would it be something better for the um, cooperative? No. No. No, he's oh. working in town property. That the town is yeah. Oh, no, he was, property. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, he's working with Rosemary in Brain Tree. He must be very ambiguous around the household. But I have that too. And he could talk to the SRC <laughs> about getting material, you know, because they're going to need feedstock. Mm -hmm. But that's not, that's so far down the road. I mean, yeah. they've got to find a location and work that way. Work yeah. that route for so he wants to come and talk to us. He does. He's right. interested in in um, at least letting us know what his company does. Right. And, you know, we've done that before with a lot of different companies. Right. So that they're okay. What I, they I'll do just and add something that we're trying. He wants to come and speak with us, and that's what his company is. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? I mean, um, yeah, there was some kind of <laughs> messy sentences and stuff. So also, Todd, you had talked about making an Excel spreadsheet and in the holidays. I was so busy. Yeah. I got so bogged down and stuff, but um, I will work on it this week. Get something to you. I've got our newsletter that's due by Friday, too. So yeah. well, but, that yeah, got handed You know, this me. is something that can, can wait till you have time to really focus on it. I mean, I've got a really nice spreadsheet that has the last through 2019, 2019 through 2022 numbers. Okay. You know, 2023, obviously, because we're just going to start coming in by the end of the month. Right. But um, I do have that, and I can tell you where you're at. I mean, Kingston's doing all right, from what I recall. So okay. I don't think it's a Yeah, I think I'm doing it selfishly because I'm still on a learning curve. And so I don't really feel like I can speak intelligently because I don't I don't know what we're getting on returns, and I don't know what mm -hmm. patterns we're following, and I don't know. Like, I mean, I just get 
a lot of people I talked to say, I mean, they really love to recycle. Um, well, um, because it's yeah. so easy and stuff, but does that affect our numbers at all? How does it affect our numbers in comparison to populations? Because we're never going to get recycling numbers on brain tree because we don't have a population like brain tree. Brain tree's numbers are horrible. They're yeah. absolutely terrible. They're actually a red spot on my. They got yeah, that was just an example of a bigger place. Right, but so, um, Rosemary guys, was, she brought that up at the SSC about yeah. that the numbers were down. We may have been in on that. Yeah, their I just trash, got it quickly for a, a big community. Yeah, yeah. Their, yeah. their trash is way up and the recycling is pretty much stagnant. So mm -hmm. on my map, they're bright red. They're like they're one I'm focused on for 2024 to get down to a different color on our map. Yeah. So, yeah. and that's my main focus for 2024 mm -hmm. is getting those numbers down. And I don't you know what are, to do about it because. My son lives in Braintree. And just looking at what is in their trash, what is in their recycle. I mean, Isn't it is so hard? I have a kid like that too. Like, what did you learn living with me? Did you learn anything living with me? <laughs> it all goes away when they go to school. I took care of it all seamlessly. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's just, you know, and it, they even have a nice list on the lid. But it's. And I try to, yeah. It's so hard. But anyway, so we're back to the minutes. If there aren't any other comments, th those were my questions about what I had put in. Okay. David, anything? No. Jean, did you get, well, you didn't get a chance well, to the new ones, but yeah. you saw the other ones? I'm having a hard time hearing. You are? Okay. Yeah. I don't know what to do about that. And it is really hard because you need to come sit right here next to me. <laughs> David, you want to move up too? Yeah, it might be easier for him to hear. Maybe he can move through and then I'm going to close this door a little bit. Okay. Hopefully that helps you, Jean. You like your input. We're going to see what we can do here to improve it, okay? There we go. All nice and cozy. Nice and cozy. All right, so in the minutes, um, we have a motion. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Of December 5th. December 5th, thank you. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All right, we'll take a voice vote. The Vanessa, I. David, I. Jean, I. Jean Wyatt. Jean, have we lost you? Okay. All right. We move together and we're trying to speak louder. <laughs> Can I just abstain? Sure. That's fine. So that's three, no, three, zero, one. Okay. Thank you, Vanessa. The other two, the October and the November, there were some um, slight revisions that had to be made. When, when those are finalized, I need to walk you through the process of submitting them to the town clerk. Yeah, so I sent November, but then I think it got stuck in my outbox over the holidays. Okay, so it yeah, might have just come in this morning. Okay. Um, I can check with Jenna on my way out, but okay. I sent it to her. Should I send it to Paul? Okay, so it has to be put in a PDF form. Oh, I didn't do any of that. Okay, that's what I said. I'll walk yes. you through okay. it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So just just call me and we'll, we'll deal with it. All right. I'll check with you. Maybe I haven't said sorry. I didn't do it right. Yeah. If she even got him. <laughs> okay. Next item. Update from Paul. Well, obviously he's not here. Good update. <laughs> I was wondering if he was going to be able to make it. It's his first day back. And... Oh, yeah, he was on vacation, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. yeah. Tables are postponed. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe things in his shop that he needs to take care of. Okay, so that kind of goes along with the next item, which was promotion of the transfer station and signage, because that was, um, you know, those are kind of tied together because we had. We had done the walkthrough with Paul um, just about a year ago and decided on what new signage was was needed, and uh, we still don't have it. 
Okay, so the uh, organics collection. Um, That's under twice to it, four and seven. Hmm? It's on here twice under item four and item seven. Okay. Oh, the, that was RGC. Okay, in terms of, okay. Um, Karun, okay, so the pilot is over. The contract is signed. Um, we did approach the Council on Aging. Um, she said she was too busy right now. Um, did you say the schools are required to do this now? Composting? Yeah. No. no. Just basic recycling. Okay. But so, it's a good if they do. Yeah. So obviously the schools, um, I believe Vanessa, you and David. Yeah, we're going to just try to get something started. So in if January. you want to meet at some other point and just talk about yeah, what sure, we've done and okay. what we yeah. think would be a strategy to go forward. And you can, you can, you know, if you want to contact me, because I'm pretty open. Okay. And, you know. Yeah. And was it just the two of us or was Jean involved? I think, Jean, were you uh, also interested in working with the schools? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Okay, I thought you were. Because you had worked with them previously. <clears throat> okay. Unfortunately, all the principals have retired. Almost everyone I knew is retired. Okay, but so we'll, we'll need to make new contacts, right? But we, we do have two people there that are green team members. So I would think those would be our first point of contact. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Michelle is still at the middle school and uh, Joe is at the institute. So I, I think I still may know some of the custodians involved. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, I think probably protocol wise we would contact the school administration either the principal or and then um say we'd like to meet with the green team um, people um about this about this issue um and see where it goes yeah so i would jane can you hear me yes so i guess i would like if the three of us could just meet first to discuss uh, what we want to try to take on as a strategy um, so that when we do meet with the school people or, or introduce ourselves, we have some kind of scope of work that we're comfortable with. So, you know, instead of all going off in three different directions, I'd like it if we can figure out a time, ideally this month, to sit down. You can talk about what's worked in the past, but like you say, I mean, people retire, trends change, uh, priorities change. So I think to figure out what we think we could include in our scope of work and then kind of go from there. That work with you too, David? Yeah. I think you know, making sure that they are doing the regular recycling and then see if we can introduce the organics recycling. Yeah, let's make sure that sort of the foundations are still going on because right. at some point you sort of get tired of those. And we're in, I mean, so they have uh, trash pickup and things mm -hmm. they have to be complying with what uh, right that hollers regulations mm -hmm. and just to make sure all of those pieces are working and then to build on to that, what else can happen. And that's where the green team people can mm -hmm. probably help you, tell you what's working right now, what they need help with. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. So if I can interject too. Absolutely. So I had a, a meeting with Missy Hollenbeck, my counterpart, the new the new Kathy, um, and with the head of the Boston schools, Boston Public School for their um, food waste program. This was three weeks ago. It was just before Christmas. It was like an hour and a half meeting, and um, she she gave us some pretty good advice on how to get into the schools to start those programs. Um, because getting into Boston public schools, which have well over 100 schools, and she's got five <laughs> really successful programs right now. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was interesting. The other part of that is that Missy and I are now kind of the team lead until we figure out who's actually going to take control of it of the school recycling meetings, school diversion, whatever we're calling them, green sword, I think it is, um, which was um, um, one of our old MAPS uh, programs before she went to Boston. So we're taking over that and we'll publish those dates for the next meetings too, because if you guys are going up to schools, you're definitely going to participate in these meetings. Good, so. yeah, that would be nice. It would be nice to have some resources. Yeah, that, uh, would, that would help a lot. Oh, huge, yeah. 
strategies okay. and I mean expected outcomes because yeah. well, I mean we know, have to work within the confines of what their procedures are. We can't create new ones because they're already at max. Well, you're gonna have to create new ones, unfortunately. It's yeah, just they what are they gonna what are the how are they gonna the yeah, other, it has to the other well. part, and this is anticipation for some existing food with the uh, janitorial staff and the kitchen staff. Is they gonna resist? Some people are gonna resist it because it's another thing to do. So Right, but words, that's we're, we're putting it in the workflow. If the students empty their trays and put things in yes. de designated oh, places, yeah. people don't have to go back and sort so it out. So meeting, meeting with somebody who's running somewhat of a successful program yeah. and, and just meeting the three of us meeting starting that way, I think that's really, it, it's almost imperative. Yeah, it is. It is. Well, it seems like Tom's going to be a good resource. I will be. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of got thrown in the schools because that was never my forte, so. I'll, there's I'll probably do it. no one, so in a way. You're no, there's a lot of the Macs that are very interested in the schools, and, and we've had them throughout the last seven, 20 years, but uh, it's kind of changed hands just because people have retired, other people have moved on to other jobs, mm -hmm. and so now it's, I kind of raise my hand to help out with it, even though my interest level in schools is not as much as it is for other things, but um, but what if you can get a big bang for that? Well, I mean, that's, that's what I'm sort of thinking about. If we, that's what my, my problem is exactly what we're talking about with our sons. Mm -hmm. Like, but I taught this. And so, you know, <laughs> if we have a generation that we can start to instill, this is how you yeah. do it, yeah. then they go on and expect it to be that way. And right now, I think yeah. that the youth are really realizing what a big voice they have. And so if we give yeah. them the tools to use their voice in the appropriate way, that's the big bang for the box. I agree. I we failed. <laughs> well, I'm still working at it, but I, I have to. But <laughs> you know how it is. You pick your battles. The other thing is you're overcoming generate, trying to overcome generations of convenience. And we all, you know, I, I get into discussions a little bit at home, not to mention home anymore, because we let them, we, you know, we've talked about it as much as we can. But, you know, it was a creep. You know, given my age, we've all experienced it, but. You know, I remember, you know, barely, but World War II. And what everything was separated, we were rationed, and everybody got along. And what I'm getting at, it, it was, it was it, teamwork. It, it it was... But it became a habit. Mm -hmm. And then the convenience came along. And, you know, and, and a lot of it has to do with industry. Packaging was less expensive, et cetera, et cetera. And here we are. Now we're trying, now we have to turn it all around and try to overcome it. It's a it's a hill to climb, and all I'm getting at is those, particularly those of us who, who are a little bit older. Just I mean, I look at it like it's easy. Yeah. This is what we should have been doing from the outset. We, you know, and I'm guilty of it too. I mean, I look at stuff you know, pretty pretty good. I try not to buy anything in plastic, and it's talk it's about talk about it's climbing it's a hill. Hard. Yeah. It's hard, yeah, it's like trying not to buy anything made in China. Oh, yeah, well, that's the other. Oh, it's not, it, it, now they're trying to disguise that assembled in the U.S. Assembled, and they, they keep reading. Yeah, yeah. Or designed in the U.S. and assembled in China. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it it just all depends on what your goals are, your personal goals, as well as the country's no, goals. No, true, in true. But, but I know. think you know we know uh, from years of serving on this committee and understanding recycling, how important it is to pull out the material that we buy so that it's not going to, to be incinerated or buried or wherever it goes. It just doesn't make sense to have valuable material just thrown away. No, it doesn't. But again, it's it's a matter of getting the next generation coming along or the next generations coming yeah. along. Well, and and Europe has recognize that they have very little land. We have so, I mean, we didn't move away from landfills for a long time because we had so much land to throw it away in. You know, we, it just takes us a much longer time to start to recognize that there's a cost to that disposal and everybody's free. What do you mean it costs me to throw my trash? Well, yeah, you know what? <laughs> it's a byproduct that's useless yeah, unless we can find a purpose and a place and we're not gonna just keep digging holes in the earth to put it there. Right, right. But, Ohio or Arkansas. Right. Yeah. Five dollars a ton. So well, I have a thought that goes okay. in a totally different direction. Mm -hmm. I was talking with someone because um, over the holidays and all the donations you do and you know the needy and the whatever. And so I was talking to someone about the Baymont, and and you know these people are living in a room, mm -hmm. the whole family in a room. And then I had after one of the meetings looked at I go, 
I don't know, it's in my notes, it takes too long, but there's some company, you get these boxes, you can put the used up toothpaste tubes in, or you, mm -hmm. I mean, there were some like, wow. I'm never does whatever. But I just thought, what a great population to, you know, yeah, you got a dumpster out back, but you know what, here is your plastic bags, and here is your, mm -hmm. you know, the, the donations always come in, and here's a little tube of toothpaste for your family, take 10 of them. Mm -hmm. So they're throwing away toothpaste tubes left and right because mm -hmm. they're going through them all, that's what they're donated. Everything comes in some kind of, you know, we have to give them a paper bag to have their fruit. Except, you know, there's six pieces of fruit in it. And they take it out and they throw away the paper bag. You know, I, I just, I started thinking about, because there's no reason. I mean, I started looking at those boxes. It's a hundred bucks a box and you fill it up and they take it back for free. Mm -hmm. Well, where would I put a hundred dollar box to fill, you know, I don't, don't go through toothpaste that bad. But I thought, <laughs> you know, what a way to both educate mm -hmm. and accommodate because I've, can't imagine they're complying with recycling in their trash up there. I mean, there's just I think so that's much. probably pretty low on there. It is on there. I know, but I'm trying to think of if there's a way, and I don't know that there's even space for it or something. Yeah, right? I do now. I mean, we could certainly have a conversation <clears> with Sue Giovanetti and see, um, you know, if if this is something that they feel could be accommodated. Because I mean, they can't. I I. Was thinking about um they can't cook up there so everything is packaged food mm -hmm. you know think of all the packaging that comes from packaged food you know you say mm -hmm. try not to buy plastic they don't really have any alternatives they don't. Right. They don't right. and so is there a place that that plastic can go i mean we're creating a problem without a solution you know it'd be really interesting to do an audit on the trash that's coming out of the the location and the all, the, all over the all of the shelters, yeah. Right. Because I'm thinking every town and city I mean, that, that place, has these, we could start to say, here, here's a pattern of what we can do. Because these people are all going to move out and continue to throw everything in one right. bin because that's all they've been given us, you know, new citizens. Yeah, well, keep in mind that where they're from, they actually probably divert a lot. They throw a whole bin. They could they have a bin. And, and they could go. Start, we mean divert. I have a feeling. A lot of the migrants. Municipal. A lot of the migrants where they're coming from, they have to rely on these resources of the Mukri. You think Haiti recycles? I think Haiti does recycle. Yeah. Do you? I, I have a feeling like Haiti's part of where the oceans are polluted because everything yeah. just goes offshore. I don't know. I don't know. Everything I've seen and read and heard about, I know some of these other third world countries actually do a much better job of diversion and recycling and reuse. Them. A lot better job of reuse than we do. Period. Reuse, you go to Cuba and their cars were from the 50s and they're still running the things that they've recycled. Over and over. Gasoline too. So, I mean, no, but, but the parts, when you look at the engines, they are all redone parts from the 50s. Right, right. And they, and they just keep we reusing just don't, and reusing. Because we can buy it for a dollar. We don't bother yeah, to we use dispose, it to get our next Yeah, we're, we're a very, uh, let's it's throw it out. It's a gratification. It's a but we have the ease. We're of more affluent. We can afford well, let's to do that. And they cannot afford to do it. But I think about every time their seasonal clothes change, they don't have a closet to put them in. Right. So they need winter clothes when it's winter, even though they got winter clothes last November that are gone because they needed summer clothes. But well, so they may not be here anymore. You know? I heard the turnover was not as high as I had hoped. Oh, that's not they're getting cars and they're getting work permits, but they're not getting housing. Okay. Well, so, that's understandable, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Working on the affordable housing trust, I know. Yeah, that's yeah. a huge issue. But I mean, even the way that those textiles, where do they go? They got to be with the, well. They're not going in the trash because they, they would, that place would get a, a notice. Yeah. So. I don't know because we don't have regulations. <laughs> yeah, but you know what the state does. And so when the state, I mean, yeah. Halifax just got a, a letter in the mail for mattresses, but that we figured out what it was. It was a bad employee that was doing stuff to get the town in trouble. Okay. So, Great. but I mean, they caught him, and it was a one-time thing. They caught him on the first time. Wow. So, yeah. Know, so I don't know it. how they operate that facility right now. Um, I think it would probably merit a discussion with Sue Giovanetti. Well, and again, I think a discussion, but also we need to come up with what some proposed solutions are. Mm -hmm. Well, and let's we... first find out how things operate. And if they already have some some things in place and what yeah. we could do to support it or so look in the trash too. That's the other thing. You don't know until you see it's a it might actually be trash and it might actually be recycled. So I know. So do you know? It's probably two or three years ago, maybe even longer. Gene, when did we do that trash audit? 
I can't remember what was it was. Yeah, it was quite some time ago. Well, on Facebook, I was accused of going through people's trash. Of course, sure. You get to stop doing that to me. You and I'm a, like, what a, what a reputation. Did you not hear? This is a trash audit. We didn't pick any particular person's trash. It was just to determine what percentage of material could have actually been recycled. But yeah, <clears throat> the political wins at the time. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think that's I think that's great, Vanessa, and I really do think that that's something that we should pursue. Would you like me to call Sue? Um, yeah, you can. Well, you're pretty booked now, aren't you? Well, I'm going to be sitting around a lot. But you need a lot of pain for a while. <laughs> oh, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't be talking to nobody about yeah. her drugs. <laughs> yeah. I hope not. Um, oh, I mean, she happy. Wow, she just gave me a million dollars. <laughs> Let me let me call Sue Giovanetti and um, you know I don't know I don't know what her you know how full her plate is she's you know she's starting out with that small facility hundred eighty and now she's got ninety some families in addition to the ten or thirteen she had there so it's got to be a lot a lot but. Um, let me, you know, I know Sue, let me give her a call, get a feel for whether or not this would be a good time to talk. Okay. And I will let you all know. Oh, she will think. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, I think as far as the organics collection is going, um, you know, is there Saturday? Yeah. And um there was a substantial amount in the bins, and I know they picked it up Friday. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't, I you know, wish Paul were here because then I could ask him if they're getting inquiries from people about it or if people are just showing up and dumping stuff. I have yet to really catch too many people putting stuff in there. I think mm -hmm. I saw one woman a couple weeks ago. It's uh, it's not a it's not like at the regular recycling bins where there's tons of people. <clears throat> Do you think if they're moved to another spot, they get more use? Well, they're getting used if they're full. It's just not a Room. social water yeah. hole like but, it brings all together. Yeah. I was wondering if it was moved closer to the actual recycling area, it would help out. I don't think Paul would allow that. Yeah. Well, it does have an odor. <clears throat> and we thought, you know, if it's over by the composting area where Obviously. people would normally bring material to compost, this would be a, you know, it would fit fit there. Um, for a while, they had the trailers backed in so that you could easily see it and access it. When I was there Saturday, the trailers were pretty much right up in front of it, so... Well, let's move it out that way. The other part is if it's really muddy, I don't want to do it. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. you can get really wet over there and you have to walk, you know, pretty much into it. And okay. but I just kind of feel yeah. like, eh, hey, I don't need all that mud in my car. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. It's it's worse over at the, at the regular uh, yard. Yeah, that, that, could, that could be overcome. Yeah. I mean, it's all over the front end, low full of gravel or something. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if they have access to that with any regularity. Those are vessels. And I think once once there is, let's assume that it's going to stay where it is pretty much. And you might be able to expose it a little bit, little bit more than it is exposed now. But with the new with the new corral and better signage, it's going to make a difference. I think so. Your side. But it's you know I'm impressed with the mm -hmm. fact that the barrels are pretty pretty nearly full. Um, you know. By pickup time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah. So we had talked before about having um, some hand sanitizer. So I bought three of these old gizmos, and I'm I'm looking at what kind of stand would be available um, because I I don't want people walking off with it, but I want them to have full access to it. So. I haven't quite come up with the perfect solution yet. I saw one freestanding stand, but it was 
like 160 and some dollars. I just think on the corral <laughs> to build a wooden box, box frame that you slide it yeah. in. Well, the other thing you put a little bit on it so that it's what's, yeah, what's you exposed is what you need. Right, right. right. I mean, it's kind of kind of a pain in the neck, but it's less of a pain in the neck than having a replaceable box. Yeah. yeah. You know, because it's I could probably take that in a matter of 15 minutes. And I think <laughs> and you I catch him, it on the so. side. <laughs> well, no, it, it, indeed. You're absolutely right. I think but it not could a freestanding structure. No, no, no. I think it's, yeah. it could be yeah. attached. A little box could be made. Yeah, right next to the. Yeah. Easily for people who make their own boxes. Well, yeah. that's how I can make I'll do, I'll do, I'll do. I used to make boxes all the time just for gifts. All yeah, builds houses. To make, you can make a box. Kind of <laughs> all builds houses. <laughs> yeah, you could probably, well, but that's. So what's the freezing temperature of this is the problem? Well, it's alcohol. Oh, it's alcohol based. It's probably negative 60. So, yeah, I think <laughs> it would have to get much colder than it gets here for it to freeze. That nozzle would probably crack before that stuff would freeze. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, and then you can buy the like gigantic bottles that you can just fill the Pre two or three that you have because they will wear out. But, yeah. So, oh yeah, totally like the plastic will break. It, it would yeah. be convenient. I have to say that you know I, every once in a while I say, "Damn, I don't have you know, my paper I keep towel." Keep it in my car. Anyway. Well, I, well, I do. Well, too, I have and then I have to open this. Paul's got a uniform company, right? Yeah. Talk to them because they probably have the machine already. Okay. And then you just buy the the, the Purell in a bag. Mm -hmm. and you put the bag in. It's a lot okay. cheaper. Plastic, but you know. It is what it is. Yeah, because they use, um, I mean, you see them all over the place. I saw them at the hotel we stayed at last weekend in Linfield, too. I mean, they have them there. They just put them in the elevator, you know, and it's just like you just put your hand under and shh, automatic. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, they've got the, the uniform companies sell all that stuff. And they'll even take care of it, too. That's the thing. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, can't think of it. Just to do our safety cabinets back at PFI. Because I do think that that it makes sense to have something like that there. Because it's even if your bin, you know, what you bring it in is fairly clean. Once you lift the lid <laughs> and dump it, it juice gets everywhere. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, the lid is messy, and yeah. So I it think it would make sense to do this. Okay. We should just install school buckets. I bet my grandparents still have theirs in the backyard. What are they? Wheel buckets. You'd, um, it was a like almost like a uh, you know the street. Uh, what do you call them? Like the water mains down there or the gas mains okay. down there. But okay. it had a stick up part, so you'd lift it with your foot. Oh, okay. and then there was a long aluminum bucket that went down that had a handle, and the garbage man would come and take it out and dump it in the back of the garbage. Oh, really? Yeah. But all you did was step on it, and you dumped all your stuff yeah. in. So when I was growing up, we had those. Yeah. Um, Robichar, I think, had the pigs that they collected off of the. Yeah, pigs. and they stopped doing it because people were getting sick with the disease. That's why. That's why we didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but oh. now we just put it in the dirt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but that's a little different. Yeah, yeah. But you never burn that in the backyard in your barrel. Yeah, <laughs> you send it to the pig man. Yeah. All right. Well, that sounds good. I will check with Paul on that. Anything else on the organics? All right. Um, we did have a whole thing, so we did that. We did that. We did that. So we had a couple bills. One um, is the black earth. It's 180. I've already signed off, and I'll hand that in today. But the other one is we did get our insert um, in the water sewer bill. Mm, cool. Um, okay. Very cool. Um, and we got a bill for it. It's two hundred seventy-eight dollars and eighty-eight cents for sharing that bill with the water department because they got the front part. You want the back part? Very cool. Okay. Good thing to spend RDP funds on. Hmm? Good thing to spend RDP funds on. Okay. I like it. So it's uh, the company is Kelly and Ryan Associates. So I just need. Um, We'd already voted to pay for it. I just need signatures so I can send it over to be paid. So our share is 139.5? No, no, it's 278.80. Oh, that's half. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's half. half. Yeah. That's a lot bill, of money to put a flyer in. Yeah, but every resident? The yeah. bill was 557.76. Yeah, yeah every I, resident, though, that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because every 
I think everyone gets water, everyone. or the well people don't get water. Yeah. So we miss all the well people. And, and I'm not on sewer. A lot of people are not on sewer. But you still get a water bill. Yep. Yes. Can I see the insert, Jim? Sure. You need a pen? Yeah, I got a pen. I just need to pay for those. Mm -hmm. The only thing I might do next time is add the Recycle Smart URL on these. So there's plenty of Yeah, the so problem, and I wanted to bring that up after because when you guys start, oh, what was it? No, the Recyclepedia. Yeah. Um, if you just, on a machine that's never done it before, Google, Recyclopedia, it takes you to the vendor page, not to the Massachusetts page. Correct. That's why you need to recycle smart MA dot org. And yeah. That so okay. that I took a while to find it because every time there's you also know, oh, another recycle there's a recycle smart. smart org, which is in Northern California. Yeah. The recycle smart MA dot org is here. So right. that's but the recyclopedia we, we reference all the time, but if you've never yeah. put it on your computer, it takes you to the vendor page and not to the Massachusetts Correct. embedded with good information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an issue. Okay, so your recommendation on the insert was to include the URL. Yeah. But if they went to the town webpage, they'd get to it anyway. Yeah. They would, but I think it turned out nice though. I like it. Yeah, it's, I thought it was really good. I think it stands out. Yeah. It looks yeah. important. <laughs> we, we didn't then, have, um, you know, we didn't have a say in that. That was. That's still cool though. I like stuff in color because people tend to look at that more. Well, I was hoping that they didn't get disgusted by seeing the increase in the water rates and just they might throw it away or not even look at what yeah, I they had a It does say pieces. over on both sides. Yeah. I mean, I, I it does say over, which I so thought was great. Um, okay. okay. So we have that. Um, so I've been working on this recycling and trash report. Um, and Vanessa, thank you for your comments. And um, Paul sent me some too, which I've incorporated. And I think I sent you out the revised one. So wait, where are we on the agenda for this? Uh, that's probably down under updates on other recycling issues. Okay, I'm just going down through my file. <laughs> and is the report something you do every year, or is no, it a new thing? No, this is a new thing. Um, and how we distribute it is is really what I need some ideas on. It's actually five pages. And as I said in my email, once I get the the uh, final figures for 2023 from Lynn, I'll update the figures because what I have on here is the 2022. I took them off the report that you and Paul do yep. at the state level. And when will you guys be doing that? Update? The 2023 update? So those, so the, yeah. Um... To sit, uh, but it's not an application. The survey is open now, as of today. Okay. And through February 15th. Okay. So sometime between now and then, when everyone gets them in, but you know, you've got people with private haulers that won't get their information until next month. So okay. All right. Just depends on when you get it in. Okay. Because Lynn, Lynn gets figures uh, on a monthly basis, and she just sent sent me what she had. The problem is. And I brought this up on my on, when we were on that webinar. Mm -hmm. Some stuff is calendar year, some stuff is fiscal year. Mm -hmm. It's very confusing. It's like because yeah, if I want to do a report on calendar year, which makes sense to the residents, then she has to send me two reports, the one for prior fiscal year, and then I have to do all the adding and stuff. Uh, which you know isn't a big deal, but okay. So you're doing one report by fiscal year. I'm trying to do one by calendar year. <laughs> That's I'm sure it's been discussed uh, so many times the last seven years. You have no idea. Yeah, 
it's a topic that comes up every one of our MAC meetings that when we get together to propose changes, and mm -hmm. it's usually in August or so. But um, yeah, the whole calendar year fiscal year thing, it's, it's tough to do because, you know, most municipalities, with the exception of one of mine, work off fiscal year. Mm -hmm. Whitman's the only one that works off calendar year. Really? With, with their solid waste, yeah. Oh, with their solid waste. Their solid waste, waste contract is, is calendar year instead of fiscal, mm -hmm. which drives me. Okay. It's the only one. Um, the rest are all fiscal year, but the problem is with reports, it's hard to, you know, if you have a private hauler, they mainly operate on calendar year. They don't like to operate on fiscal year. And so that's why when you get, mm -hmm. you know, proposals and stuff, it's good through December, not through May. <laughs> so okay. it really, it, it it's tough. It's tough. Yeah. That, the government was crazy when they came up with fiscal year. <laughs> it should have, everything should have been calendar year. Yeah. It's so much easier. But most reporting when it comes to solid waste um, tonnage, almost all of it is all calendar year. Mm -hmm. It's all January through December. Like it's, if the if the transfer station is working off a fiscal year report for solid waste to get to the residents, that's well, that's, that's their choice. Those really. are the spreadsheets that she keeps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for budget purposes, I can see why they would do that because right. you have to work on the budget. Of the fiscal right. Year, but and I figured that was why the state yes. did stuff because of the yeah. fiscal year. Okay. Well, for 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 the for the RDP for the grants, yeah, that's all fiscal year because that fits in with. Municipal budget, budget. budget. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> as, as soon as I get the <laughs> final figures from Lynn, I'll I'll put that in for now. How do we distribute this report? And what should it be called? Mm -hmm. I just threw a working mm -hmm. title in there. Um because mm, it's not it's mostly informational. The the actual trash figures and recycling figures come at the very end. So it's, um, you know, simple things like, where do I get a, a sticker? Who, who can qualify? Are there discounts? So the first question I would ask is, who is your target audience? Who are you trying to reach? We're trying to reach the residents to, okay. to educate them about recycling and how they can participate. Okay, so the second question would be, where are those people getting their information from? That's the million dollar question that every committee has. I've seen that on the website because you go to Facebook and everyone's like, well, when is the transfer station? Oh, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's like they nobody likes looking at the website for some reason. So I don't think you can put it on the website and you can refer people there. You find you've got to find another avenue if you're trying to reach residents on how to get that. And how do we do that? I mean, that's, that's, that really is the question every really committee question. I work on asks because without a central location, it used to be the newspapers or it used to be, you know, some central spot. And then we thought the web page would be you know, where everyone would go. Well, it's not. Yeah. I don't know if they take statistics. It would be interesting to know what the traffic is on that. Yeah, so, it would be. Because I think it's fun. I mean, and I don't know that we have old numbers, but I mean, certainly for the library, all of Susan Pupil's stuff isn't even on there, mm -hmm. which was, you know, people talk to me and they'll go like, where can I find out about whatever? I don't know anymore. You got to make an appointment <laughs> or something because all of that was on the website. It was great, but they charged too much money at like 40 some bucks every page you wanted converted. Right. You know, we don't have a budget for that. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Because when I started, you know, when they made the switch, and I'm looking for stuff, they, they used to find in the library website, and it's not there. And so I did talk to Donald, and he goes, "It was a matter of money. You know, they wanted to charge so much money to switch everything over, so we had to pick and choose what we could switch over." And then... do you have? Do you have a town database of email addresses of people that live in town? I don't think so. Right, so <clears throat> you have to buy it. one of the tools. No, you don't. I mean, you're talking about the directory. So the reason oh, I'm stuff, like if you want butters, you got to buy them. If you want whatever, I, if, if you want particular lists, don't you have to pay for them? No, no most of them. Yeah. So there's a there's a residence list that this town clerk. There used to be a book that you had to pay for. Now it's online. Um, Self public information. Yeah, online. and if you want to know butters, it's on the GIS. Okay, but that's a lot of hunting back. No, oh, you just put in the property and then look at 
is a place of abundance. So my just one thought that I mm -hmm. have, trying to keep you on topic here, but um, <laughs> the this you know now I'm in charge of the newsletter, mm -hmm. which has been fun to say the least. Um, we've got a contact list of about 2,200 people from mm -hmm. all over the state that we send our newsletters out to, and they obviously change. You know, email addresses they go bad, people leave, mm -hmm. you know, they shut them down, and so on. So there's a lot of maintenance involved. But my recommendation, my suggestion would be. Figure out a way to capture everyone's email addresses in town. And not by just buying them. I'm saying have people sign up for maybe a Kingston Recycling Committee newsletter. Mm -hmm. Keep them in constant contact. Um, it's fairly inexpensive. And then you can send out newsletters quarterly or yearly or whatever you want. You send that mm -hmm. out. But that's a really good way to capture people's email addresses and keep them in a safe spot of people that want information. Okay. But I think as you go on through all these little events that you do too, mm -hmm. have a sign up sheet. You know, hey, if you want to be updated on what's going on, you know, sign up with an email and we'll send it. We'll send it. Okay. This this town already has an alert system that mm -hmm. you can sign up for. If you want to know um, if the planning board is having a meeting, okay, you get an alert. If you want to know if the recycling committee is meeting, you get an alert. Um, so That's with cool. that already in place. I'm, I'm wondering if we could tap into that. Right. Or if they feel and that's that what those who are interested in recycling have already signed up for the recycling committee. And that's why I've asked if there's some sort of database in town of emails. Because yeah. if you have emails. That's where people voluntarily sign up to get alerts. And that's the best best way to reach people that are going to actually pay attention is the ones that voluntarily sign up. You start buying less people to read stuff that goes in spam. Mm -hmm. you know. But the people that really want the information, that's one way to do it. The other is post it on your on your website, put it on the Facebook page. I mean, you guys got to really talk enough garbage here on your on the Kingston mm -hmm. Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Hey, look, you guys have all the stuff you want to talk about. You know, check out check out our our stats. You know, check out our, our yearly report that we start doing from the recycling and transfer station. What would be really neat, and I'm not going to do it, so I shouldn't even say it, but but to have a table of contents for those questions, mm -hmm. so that you click on a question and it takes you to the answer. Instead of having to read the whole thing to find out what the questions and answers are, but but that's putting it in HTML. Yeah, you can use anchors for that. But I mean, it's just the idea that you know they they start and they go, "I'm not interested in this," but really something way down in page three was going to be what that's got what their curiosity, and so they have a list of what the questions are. Kind of like Claire does the oh. the SSRC newsletter. Yeah, I think she's using Survey Monkey. We use Constant Contact. We didn't like Survey Monkey, but constant contact change, and you can't do anchors on your page. So I hit that my newsletters. It's, they got rid of it. Okay, but ago. what does that software does she use to just set up the newsletter? Survey Monkey. She uses Survey Monkey to yeah. do the newsletter? I believe so, yeah. Or to distribute the newsletter? Well, she builds it in Survey Monkey and then distributes it through. Oh, really? Without any data collection? That's kind of, a, I, I don't use No, they just, no, they, it collects all the data, just like constant contact. You can get all those reports. You know who opened it, how many opens, what they clicked on, which links were probably more popular. It's, our average open rate, I think, is somewhere in the 40%, which is pretty good for a newsletter. I think the average is five or less. <laughs> so, um, I think we're at 48%, 48.5 last month. Last time that happened, so. but no, the, all those stats are in both of those. Both of those yeah, Survey Monkey is not just surveys; it's just like because okay. we use um constant contact. Yeah, that's what we use. And political campaign. So. Okay. okay, so what what do you guys think? Is there too much stuff in here? Is there not enough? Uh, like you say, it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. I mean, the other thing is, <laughs> not sure that I got a, you know, that it that the questions were organized necessarily. So even if you had like, I don't know, like I, how to recycle or, you know, I, I don't know. I haven't read it for a while, but yeah, you know, I it, kind of was winding through it, and yeah, I felt like read the revised version. I did. I eliminated some stuff and reorganized it. Okay. I will, but, but I enjoyed reading it. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know that other people would look at the length of it and go, okay, I'm going to tackle this right now. Right. right. Um, right. But there might be tidbits that they go, I would jump to that, but mm -hmm. I don't really have an overview of how it gets thing. there. Let me see. So I, I will look at it again and give you feedback okay. on that. I mean, I'm sort of thinking about, don't we have a special town meeting coming up and to put those out there on the tables? That's so annual. That's in okay. the yeah. Okay. Um, but even to put those on the table with the yeah. annual reports. Yeah, I can um, get permission from the moderator to do that. And put, um, I mean, the other thing is, um, like we're talking about interacting with the schools, but is there a way, if you talk to the administration, that, that they get put in the mailbox of every teacher that's a resident of mm -hmm. Kingston? Because then a teacher looks at it, and this becomes information that they can convey. It answers questions that maybe they hadn't even thought of asking that question. They may not read it. They have so much other stuff they have to do all the time. Mm -hmm. But I just thought as a king, I wouldn't want it if I lived in Plimpton as a teacher or a <laughs> or whatever. So it was really only to put into the boxes of the teachers that are yeah. residents of the town. That makes sense, actually. Kind of like what I do. Because I just, I kind of, that's the bang for the buck thing. Where's the trickle down that's going to yeah. happen? Mm -hmm. We can't really give it to every kid. One of the things is teachers will talk to the students. The students will bring it home. Yeah. 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 Especially the green team. Yeah. People. Um, but it's, but I think, you know, yeah. there's those people who are interested, they signed up. But there's those people that don't really know that it answers questions that they didn't know they had. Mm -hmm. And so that, to me, it's kind of, I mean, certainly I read it all because I'm still trying to come up to speed on you know, like I've stopped throwing a whole bunch of really great plastic in the trash because it's not recyclable. Right. You know, right. I've learned I'm like, hey, that goes in the trash, guys. That goes in the trash, guys. I know. <laughs> it feels I know. so terrible, but I don't want to mess up the system. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, as a teacher, I would probably look at that and go, this is my town. I didn't know all this yeah. stuff. Yeah. Or I did. And, yeah. you know. Okay. And then okay. they refer to somebody else because that's well, that's what librarians do, but I think <laughs> so well, we'll do that too. Yeah. So add that to your list of um, topics you want to discuss with the schools. Okay. All right. Yeah, I I mean it's still still a draft. Um, I just think it's important for us to keep reminding people yes. uh, of these things. And there's always new people coming into town and um like you say, I think younger people are, are paying more attention now to recycling issues because they understand the impact it has on, on the environment and their future. So this is just my first attempt at doing well, I thought this. it was. I was really impressed. Um, <clears throat> and I want to make it meaningful and use, usable. So I think your idea is great. I just have to see what the mechanics are of, of doing that. Okay. And certainly, you know, I had been asking have you if there's seen anybody. It? I read through the original one and I, yeah. I, I thought I made some comments, but I don't remember. I didn't ago. get them. Okay. If I did, I don't think I got them. All right. Well, I'll go through the revised version. And they're still eligible for comments, which if you still oh, yeah. them. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. knows. I'll comment on anything. Okay. <laughs> I usually do. That's the weird part. Yeah. Um, um, I, Right, I don't. I don't seem to have any comments from you, but it's weird. Unless there's stuff in your outbox, my stuff is up there frequently. <laughs> I don't know why. All right. Um, the other thing I did was I tried to pull together the um, recycling committee um, activities regarding RDP for 2023, because mm -hmm. um, I know you and Paul will be working on that shortly. Yeah. And at the end, I just put all the stuff that the town does. Um, that's for you. Okay. The only thing I'll need is the, the prices, the really the cost. Okay. It's, yeah. Yes. So that, can I, I put this under the RDP? Yeah. I mean, the under 2024 RDP. review mm -hmm. of guidelines and that we reviewed 2023. Yeah, we're going to hopefully have a few minutes to talk about that today. Um, oh no, okay, it's been reported. I started on that one. Okay. okay. Um, so is this for distribution or no, this put is, this together? So this is for the report that's due by that, February 15th. That Paul has to, has so to submit. In, yeah, there's a, there's, there's a, um, an RDP spend report. So, and everybody has to do this each year. 
So through January through December, this month's calendar year, what did you spend it on? How much did you spend? And then I just go in a specific category. Okay. But so it's a it's a grant. Yeah, it's a grant report. requirement. Summary report. It's so a grant that, report. That, you know, yeah. How much we're carrying over and how much we spent yeah. here. Okay. Do you need this back? No. Okay. No. Um, and then I I went through the report that you and Paul did last year to yeah. see if there was Perfect. anything else that we could be doing. Well, organics will be added for. Did we have it last year? We, we had it last did. year. Yeah, yeah, we had another one. Yeah. So, RDP. There was a webinar a couple weeks ago. Yep. Can you believe we're starting to do things proactively? That's been my request for seven and a half years. Instead of being behind yeah. the eight ball, now we're going to get it out ahead of time. For 2025, uh -huh. all that stuff's going to go up this year, <laughs> not next year. <laughs> but here's the bad, bad part. Uh -oh. I mean, it is it is great to know what, what they're changing and yeah. <laughs> what we can do. But right up front, they said this is currently funded by waste to energy. Right. processes which are due to sunset in 2025 mm -hmm. which means end of funding not necessarily we went through this whole thing three years ago it was just before covid yes. and there was a fear that the entire program was going to get scrapped mm -hmm. and um greg cooper went to fight the powers that be uh and ended up like tripling or it was it was either double or triple the value of those credits till 2025. Mm -hmm. So I don't foresee them going away, but I don't know if they're going to hold the value that they've had the last you know four or five years. That's the issue. So okay. if, I don't like I said, if that funding goes away, the Mac program's dead. Like I don't have a job because that's how right. I get paid. Right. So in that they none nobody in Boston has said you guys are fine. You're staying here, so don't worry about it. And they said okay. that last time because I I swear I was like we're all gonna get fired we're gonna we're not gonna have jobs after this and then I realized <laughs> maybe I jumped the gun a little bit so yeah but um yeah it's not gonna go away it's just we don't know what the values are. So. okay so that's why I emailed <clears throat> Claire saying Claire you know she's done um, templates for us to submit to legislators before mm -hmm. um, and I thought this seem to be a worthy topic where we could uh, thank you <laughs> and solicit our, our representatives to say hey are you aware and um you know how can we continue to have this funding i guess it's it's there's a difficult argument here because they also started out with how much money has not been spent and certainly we're sitting on a pile of it um, because we were hoping to gradually build up enough maybe to do something with another swap shop. Um, and I'm sure there's other communities that are also, you know, stockpiling the money with a goal in mind, but they're just looking at how much money is on spend versus what's been spent. And well, if you don't spend it, that means you don't need it. I mean, it's it's the old government attitude. I know every every September that I worked for the federal government, our fiscal year ended September 30th. You've got so much money, you've got to spend it. So you go on a spending free, you know, spending yeah. binge because you use it, you use it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. and it. often Congress never got around to giving us our next year's budget for several months. Good. You know, so you had virtually no money for the first six, seven months of the fiscal year. It's so, great. No, it's, it's, it's not perfect, perfect. Yeah. It? So, you know, you, you stockpile oh, your money yeah. in, in September because then you could better anticipate what your spending needs are going to be for the next six months, knowing that you weren't going to have any income for that period. Yeah, it's a crazy way to run a Run a business, but you know, of course, government's not a business. I don't know how many times I've heard them. No, um, but I think that there may be some of that too that people are they are stockpiling with a, a stated goal. Now, is, is there any place I didn't see any place in the report that said, you know, here's what your current 
bound to it's in the, it's in the circuit, yeah. and then what are your so the spend report has that in it okay you know, so. i know exactly how much you have i can look at it when i get home okay um however i am going to say that kingston is not even close to being in that list of no, so state we board. get little money do we have hold on you guys money. spend your money that's not an issue if you guys want to save it up for a couple of years that's not an issue the ones that we're looking at the ones i'm not me but the ones that boston's looking at are Let's just say the ones that haven't spent any money for four or five years. Oh my goodness. And they've got three, four, five, six hundred thousand dollars. But it's do they not have constant. do they have a, a project in mind? No. Funding? They never yeah, do. Yeah. But they're just putting in there, oh, we're gonna buy a compactor. Okay, well, you have six hundred thousand dollars and a compactor is thirty. Yeah. So where's the rest of the money gonna go? That's what they're looking okay. at. Okay. So and the reason they're looking at it is because exactly what you just said. Mm -hmm. In September, if you're sitting on a ton of money. We're not going to get it next year. Like, why would why would the state want to give any more RDP funds to to municipalities that aren't spending it to begin with mm -hmm. when it was supposed to be for conversion, right? Recycling, right. you know, reuse stuff like that. So, you guys are good graces. I you get okay. nothing to worry about. Okay. So most of my municipalities are great. There's a few that aren't, mm -hmm. and I'm working with them to try and figure out where they're going to spend their money. Mm -hmm. You guys aren't even close to being on the radar. Okay. All right. So, well, I guess yeah, that's Paul, nothing for you. Paul to said that um, he had a piece of equipment. I forget what it's called, compactor or something, at the transfer station, and then we just got um, the TAM released the um, the capital planning list of what's. Um, you know what departments have requested and what's probably going to move forward and um it wasn't on either list hmm. um so that is why i was hoping paul was going to be here so i'll just wasn't that a meeting call. like a few weeks ago huh? wasn't that meeting a few weeks ago with the finance the committee capital planning, capital planning. Capital yeah planning. he said yeah he was but, going to that a couple so it's a couple not, months though. right yeah but, i know but, but now not so, on there but now the plan is on the town website for you to look at as to who requested what and what they're probably going to recommend. So did you back the request out? It's not on here. So that's why Maybe. I'm wondering if we just figured hmm. we would pay for it with RDP. And I think it's important for us to know if that's yeah, his, because yeah. he had originally said taking it all out of RDP, then he talked about going 50-50. Well, that equipment was more than what you guys had. Mm -hmm. okay. The compact for the trailers are they're a couple hundred thousand. It's not, it's not okay. Stuff, so. so I do need to ask Paul. Yeah. Um, what what is going on there? Because that you know I'm always grateful that he allows us to utilize RDP funds for our activities. But I always have the understanding that this is town town money, and certainly his priorities would come before anything we we yeah. do. But it makes it a little tricky for us to plan mm -hmm. um, if I don't know what he's he's planning. So I, agree. I will ask him uh, what is. But a compactor is for the trash. It's not for the recycle, is it? Or is it a compactor for recycle, like the cardboard? Well, that's actually a good point. Mm -hmm. So technically, I mean, I think we can so help out on the recycling side, but the you trash, can't, yeah, we can. Technically, you cannot use RDP for anything to do with solid waste. So yeah, if it's a trash compactor, it. if it's one of the hundred yarders, you can't use it for that. Mm -hmm. But if he's going to get a compactor for cardboard or cans or yeah, something like that, I, I may be different. misstating what he said he needed it for. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I just realized that. Yeah, you're right. You can't use it for some of those things. Yeah. So it must have been something to do with the recycling. Maybe a new, what do they call them, cans? Oh, the big belly cans? The, the big trailer type thing. They do call them cans. I think he calls them cans. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. The, the, the <laughs> dumpster is a big one. Yeah. That goes on the back of the truck. Yeah. So I, I don't want to make this meeting longer than it has to be, but I was totally lost mm -hmm. when you said it's great that we're getting the information for 2025. And you said, oh, it's so bad because something ends. And then we went okay. into this whole so, whatever, and, and <laughs> away it went. And I just so, stopped writing. Okay, so, I didn't get that at all. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so the waste waste diversion credits, or WEX, waste to energy credits, WEX, WEC, that is something that's generated through um, the 
combustion facilities. So when you drop your trash off at CMAS or one of the other ones up north, they they consider that the federal government, well, certainly me, because I disagree with burning trash. I think it's just destruction of everything. Um, there's valuable resources for them. So when they generate a watt of electricity, there's a credit that's generated. And it's just a fictitious piece of paper, right? It's like, you know, I could write down this is worth one rack or one rack. And this is what it is, because you diverted the material by creating energy, which is now being sold to the grid to be used somewhere else. I'm not going to get the logistics of the deal. No, but the so are they going to stop burning is the deal? Or what? No, they're not going to away at 20? There is a value oh. on that credit. And okay. let's just say that value is $20. So what that does is there's a, maybe there's a company that's a heavy polluter. They buy that credit to offset their carbon footprint, right? So that credit allows them to basically pollute <laughs> and get away with it because they're, they're diverting paying. from somewhere else. They're paying for it. They're paying to pollute. But they're getting away with it. So that's where those things are sold. And those are sold at a premium, $20, $25. They were down as low as I think $8 at one point, um, $9, something like that. They were really cheap. Um, they were almost at no value back just before COVID. And so that's when um, Greg went to, you know, he fought for this and he ended up getting literally double or triple what the value was originally planned for. I don't know how he did it, but he did a good job doing it. Um, and that's why now they're 29 or 30 bucks or whatever, whatever it was. I, I can't remember what it was, but that's expiring. That agreement expires in 2025. Okay, so that's what you're talking about. So that value is now in flux starting in 2025. So they've got to go back and renegotiate with whoever they negotiate with. I don't even know. Okay. It's it's really, a, <laughs> it's a it's a huge topic. And Claire tried to bust into it to try and figure out what exactly is a waste energy credit. How are they generated? Who does it? Who's the group? She couldn't find anything either. So right. it's like, nobody knows how these things appear, but they just appear. <laughs> and then there's a value to them. Mm -hmm. So but that helps a lot. That, so that was what the termination, only money, have a contract that was kind of yeah. lucrative. So, so we're still going to have contracts because we're still going to burn yeah. trash. And just have to pay so credits. Just, just to finish it, and I'll try and make it quick. That $20 credit, let's just say, right? Half of that goes to the energy company and the other half goes to DEP. Right, so now DEP has ten dollars of that twenty. That goes in the fund that pays for my salary, it pays for the grants, it pays for my whole division is what it pays for. Mm -hmm. All the staff members in Boston are paid through that, through those credits. Mm -hmm. So when that value goes down, we have to start lopping heads off, yeah. <laughs> so or yeah, we so need this to we need to cut the, the, the regular what we spend, budget, what we, yeah. what we send out in our DP, and that's what we're going through right now. Is we are working in a very tight budget because we don't know what the value is going to be and that's why some of the programs are going on. Okay. Mm -hmm. For that's just one of the reasons, not that's all of it. That's a really yeah. curious way of funding. It's, it's very insured at certain points. Did someone come up with the idea that that was going to be an incentive for those people employed doing that or going to do a better job? No, it was an incentive for us out here to do a better job. That's, that, that's, uh, that's I didn't phrase it. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, it's, it's incentive for all of us to do our part. And we're just the facilitators of that program. I mean, fundamentally, I would look at it and say, okay, it's over. Now you guys got to stop polluting. Or, you know, we're going to be so we're going to those... restructure. And, you're and gonna, what you're gonna, one way or another, you're going to pay, but you're going to stop pumping into the air you're, well, as much. Yeah. And what you're seeing now is we're seeing that through RDP with certain cuts or certain programs being brought back to being paid for. And that's because those programs have been around, they're in place. Yard waste is one that got cut. Everyone's doing yard waste and has been for 20 years. There's no reason for us to pay someone it's not to continue doing anymore. something they've been doing for 20 right. years. Yeah. We're trying to push the envelope. Are they going to scrap collecting yard waste because we don't pay them anymore? Which is yeah. a very small number. I mean, $600 to $1,100 to get rid of your yard waste is nothing. It's hundreds of thousands of dollars to get rid of that stuff. So our little grant program does not cover, you know, a hundredth of what it costs to get rid of that material. It's going away because they're not going to get rid of it. They'll find the money somewhere else. But it allows us to use maybe free up some funds mm -hmm. to find something else that we can push. Okay. And that's why you see us opening up different categories. DEI for one, which I think is a great category: diversity, equity, and inclusion. Mm -hmm. How do we get the minority or um, you know limited English speaking populations the resources they need to be able to Recycle because 
for the longest time. Nobody cares about it. Well, if we put it up at Baymont, all, we could get credits for well, it. Well, that's the thing. That's it. And that's, that's the population we're trying to reach. The ones that mm -hmm. don't have access to the recycling mm -hmm. center. Like, how are they going to push stuff into the recycling? They don't get the access. Multifamily um, apartments. Brockton. Brockton's huge. They've got up to like seven or ten families in a home. They now have a commercial dumpster, but they don't have a recycling bin. So all the recycling's going into the dumpster. Mm -hmm. Nobody worries about that. The landlords don't care because they're slum well, they're, It's they a bigger problem. They don't get water bills, so they're using all of Salt well, Lake's water. <laughs> nah, that too. At the wrong time. That of day. too. But it's we're opening up these categories to really push that envelope to make sure that we're hitting the entire population, not just you know the ones that think they deserve. <laughs> so, um, but like I said, you'll see different programs pop up from time to time. You'll see stuff disappear based on. How long it's been there and how many how many municipalities are doing it mm -hmm. you know yard waste is a big mm -hmm. almost every municipality does that so it's like why do we have it on right right and it was a big discussion we had that discussion there's some max that totally disagree with it like western mass they're like oh my towns are going to stop doing it probably not no they're not yeah so, where are they going to put it otherwise then? exactly that's the thing. well that that's it and and the the general public doesn't know you're getting grant money because they're doing that exactly you know, it's yeah. a, it's a part of the recycling program that's offered by the town. Mm -hmm. And if you're currently participating, you're probably going to continue to participate because yeah. it's easy to get rid of all that stuff. So the it's one big, thing that they they did talk about is that um, enforcement is going to be the new mm -hmm. emphasis, and that's where we we kind of fall down as a community. And there again, I I asked Claire through the SSRC, if a few towns could go together to hire an enforcement official, because there's not enough hours, I think, for each municipality to hire someone and to handle the personnel issues. And so it makes more sense to have a, a like a contract for several communities I agree. to have an enforcement person who, okay, they come to Kingston, on Monday, they go to Duxbury on Tuesday, they go somewhere else on Wednesday, you know, just um, to me, that's that's something that a cooperative could help with. Um, so we had talked about it, you know, hiring a college student, but I don't think that you want to have a college student, to me, is too much liability. I agree. You know, and it has to be someone who knows what they're doing and has the authority to say to a resident, sorry, you know, this can't go because it's not done properly. And you had that with Julie Sullivan. Yes, we did. So, and she was hired by the SSRC, right? Yep, correct. Um, through a grant. Through a grant, yeah. So that was my other question is, okay, so if the focus is going to be on enforcement, is this is DEP going to offer grants? Or right. enforcement? Mm -hmm. you know? so. Because if the whole emphasis is on enforcement and that's where they want us to focus that's where we need financial assistance i agree mm -hmm. so you know we had the rico grant and then we had the um what was the one right after the change it went from rico to something else it's a waste and recycling enforcement coordinator recycling enforcement rpco recycling enforcement Recycling edu education coordination or something. Um, and then uh, that went into a different grant, which was a little bit less hostile than that that word. In. But they got rid of that just due to funding constraints. Okay. Um, there were other programs I think that were higher up on their list mm -hmm. to keep them keep them going. So. Well, they they made it pretty clear in that webinar that enforcement was going to be pretty high on the list so i don't understand why they're yeah i think they're um, not supporting it but well the grants i think when it came to their discussion. sorry can i break in one second yeah go ahead so uh janine claire and i wrote a grant proposal to dep um for funding to hire the recycling enforcement coordinator so we used some grant money to hire her, and uh, and then like different towns chipped in something, and she would go to different towns 
we we pay her according to like how many hours a week she was gonna work at any particular town or within a month or something like that, something to that degree. So that that's how it happened the last time. That's right. And that's why I'm thinking that's that should be available. Again, if that's going to be their priority is the enforcement. Um, because obviously with the little RDP money we get each year, that's not going to pay for enforcement. No, it doesn't person. Um well it would be, I don't know. I think enforcing a person requires a bunch of education that's ongoing. And so, I mean, I'm just thinking and they have about to know what each community, you know, requirements are in each community. They should be statewide, but I don't know if they are. Um, but like here, we do have private college, but we also have a transfer station. So would they work both, both avenues? Would they be at the transfer station periodically to assess what people are throwing away? Or would they strictly work with private callers and go down the street and check the bins that are out for collection. I think it depends on there's a couple of factors. One is you guys have regulations in place which are requiring private haulers, private haulers to have a recycle bin next to the trash can. That's your regulation. I think for them to look in the container is pushing your authority. I don't think you should be doing that. Right? You can't necessarily enforce um, a private resident who has a private company that they're recycling right. What you can really? do is you can enforce your bylaws, which are, do they have a recycling bin? That's just basically a drive by. So if they do have a recycling bin out, great, they're in compliance. If they don't, then you write them a letter and kind of move through the process. When it comes to the, the, the recycling center, that individual would turn from enforcement to education, right? More of an education mm -hmm. background, which is, you know what? This plastic type was not recyclable. This is a black plastic. It's not going to be seen on the belts because the belts are black. So this is actually trash. Or this one's a clear one. So this is fine. Or this material goes into that bin, not this one. Okay. So I think it's kind of a two pronged approach here. Mm -hmm. But you you absolutely cannot look at someone's bin with a private hauler when the town is okay, nothing. You can't. Okay. I, I I wouldn't go there. Okay. So that because I was thinking about bringing you. Yeah. Where she did look in the bins, but because that was because it was in town. Right. It's the, okay. the town owns those bins. Yes. Yeah, they can do whatever they want. Once right. it's at the curb, it's in the town bin. It's town property. Okay. So okay. that's thank you that's for that. making that clear. Yeah. Yeah. You want to be getting in trouble now, girlfriend. Unless so, you're a fed and you have authority to go in someone's trash, I wouldn't open that bin at all. <laughs> no. Because there's yeah. that could be no, legal issues. So that would that would then carry forward to the to the transfer station too. I mean, if you're watching somebody recycle and you're not doing it properly, you can make a comment. Education either. Yeah. However, if somebody's got a big mother plastic bag or ten of them that are that are going into the compact, so you, you don't have the right to inspect. You do have the right to inspect there because you they're do. in your property. Once they're in trash. the compactor, but you can't no, get them out. No, no, but well, no, you, you can ask them to open the no, bag. Before, before, the, you you can before it goes in there, what do you got in the bag? Because you know, you don't have to spend much more time than being in There's line. The big bottle you got this, sticking yeah, out of the plastic side. You know, and you know this cardboard and everything else yeah. going in. I know? think from an educational standpoint, standpoint, that's okay. But you can't go in there. If someone's going to have the recycling in the trash bag, you're going to open it up. You're not going to give them a ticket. You're not going to fine them 10 bucks for violating. Mm -hmm. You're going to sit there and you're going to say, look, the only reason I'm here, I don't really care what's in here. But what I do care about is that this is put in the proper containment unit, which is over there. This material goes there. This material goes over here. Food waste can go in that bin. Yeah. So from that standpoint, that's you You can yeah, you can do that all day long if you want. I mean, but then that that also, I mean, going back to how do you do it, and and there needs to be somebody employed either on you know it would need by, to be a by a county or, or the town. It'd be a town employee that would do that. But you know, there they then but that's that education goes to too on being also, tactful and knowing the right thing. It also goes to funding. I mean, that's what Julie did. Julie, that's what Julie did over, you know, right. her tenure was SSRC. She was over at Situate, and they were tearing bags open there. They, they were doing the same thing. thing. Oh yeah. Yeah, she was doing that. I think it was Situate. It was Situate hanging with somewhere else. They actually tore the bags open. And they were explaining the residents. The role of An education education officer. Yeah. yeah, you don't put enforcer because that's right. different. Then that sounds like they're a cop. 
and they're not. They're there to educate the public. And most people, most, not all, because <laughs> I've had yeah, my encounter well, with people in Abington. Yeah. You know, when I told someone they're doing a great job recycling and he threatened me. <laughs> Thanks, psycho. <laughs> I just give you a compliment. <laughs> Literally threatened to kill me over giving him a compliment saying mm -hmm. recycling is great. Yes. Um, you're going to get people like that. You know, um, the lesson I'll tell you. What, I'm, better, what but, I'm really going to is that how do you how do you how do you get the programmers? You know, it, there was success with this woman who was doing it, Julie, yeah. and but that went away with, with a grant. Yeah, but that's what, that's my point. Is is that how do you how do you can how do you convince a municipality that they should be doing this and and the value and it has to have it has to come up to some dollar value at some point. And then, and some of that's a little obscure because you know. I think the value part of the equation as a added benefit is dead, because recycling is now more expensive than the trash. I think you need to leave the value out of the conversation, and it needs to be more. Let's do what's right. Well, I'm getting, I'm so, getting value, value the, for the, the value in other words, you have to come up with. The recycling is more than the trash. We're paying more than eighty-three dollars for, for the recycling. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you're probably playing closer to one hundred fifteen a ton for that. Because there's nobody taking it right now. I mean, you guys, you guys are. Took it. That's, that's you guys are what I'm getting from Lynn at all. Well, you guys are a little bit different because you separate. But if you're single stream, you're paying more for your cycle. Oh, yeah, but we separate. So yeah. that's. So your cost overall, when you start adding everything together, is probably 80 to 85 bucks a ton to get rid of the stuff. That's my best educated guess. And that's just me being around this for so long. You, okay. know, you really have to look at that and see what it costs for a ton of plastic, a ton of paper, a ton of this. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff I would like. Yeah, now. and then we add that up. You can look at the sure stuff that becomes the most valuable yeah. to really say, you know what, we really want your cardboard. We get onto this new glass deal, we really want your glass. You I'm know, being, You're not being paid for anything. I know that. Yes, I we thought are. we are. What? Yes, we are. What do you mean? Number one, we get paid for the text files. Okay, well, that's... Getting 140 a ton on that. You can pay for cargo, too. Right? Yeah, hang, 140 hang a ton? On. You mean it's um, 20 a ton? Hang on. We're getting money for the glass, too. Yeah, that's like 20, but you have to deliver it. Yeah. So you've got a cost associated that with getting it there. You're not, you're not making any money. Trying to find so you really need to look at everything as a whole to make sure that you're in the... You know, looking at the right stuff. You know, for the 83, we have to deliver it too. Exactly. Right. Are we getting money for the metal? You might be getting a little, but that fluctuates. That's a weekly market. That's not even monthly. So one month you might pay, and one month you might get mm -hmm. some back, or it might be 40 yeah. bucks, and that's 100. I mean, it's that's a tough thing. I think overall, when you look at one ton of material, yeah. which includes everything, right? So let's just take it. Here's Exile. Excel. Excel. That's a metal. We got 13 bucks. Okay. What is that when it comes to the trash bill? You know, overall, what you spend yeah. in recycling. Yeah. And what's Republic services? For it sounds like trash bill. Oh, recycling? <laughs> that Republic? It's probably, is that the Brockton winner? I don't know. We got 12,000 from them. That would be cardboard, probably. Pepsi, we got a small amount. That's textiles. Oh, I mean, they're the school or something because I know every basic that we are getting, we're getting some money for. Um, no, and you are getting money for certain things because yeah. you separate, right? But if you take overall it's a, a ton of single stream material mm -hmm. after the rebate or what you would get back, you're still oh, yeah. paying pretty darn close, if not more, than you are for a ton of trash, yeah. depending which, on your contract, which is why I hate singles. Yeah, it's just, yeah, I mean, you guys are doing things right. This is the way it should be. Oh, yeah, this should all be separated because you're going to get. You're gonna pay less, but you're still gonna pay overall. You know, granted, you've got thirteen thousand. That's a thousand dollars a month. I know, roughly. But okay. overall, your disposal cost for all that other material is probably in the ballpark of fourteen thousand. So, right. really, what are you? Right. You know, you're still paying probably right, the but same. You're track. diverting that material, so it's not currently gone. Right? No, exactly, and that's the point. And the it's point not getting hard. soiled. You know, so when you start got, talking value, you've got that value. You know. But the, yeah, the value isn't always the dollar. Right. Let's just say you're not making. Yeah, but it has to be a bottom right. line. For yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, it's not. It, uh, I think right. we have to start I mean, hopefully you know, instilling in our younger people that's not the be all end all. Mm -hmm. It's that we have clean materials like yeah. during World War II, 
that can be reprocessed mm -hmm. so that we don't have to keep um, digging material. holes to take out, you know, fracking or oil. Well, that's it. You know, and, and it is, and, and that goes to education. Right, and, and that's why I'm thinking the biggest bang for the buck isn't, you know, checking that plastic bag at the transfer mm -hmm. station. It's getting the young people to think when they go out and start their household, think about these things because, mm -hmm. you know, you want a better place here. You want to, but it's really, it's just hard because dollar stores everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean. Yeah. Right. So I have two things. Mm -hmm. um, one, I went through the minutes and Paul is asking, if you ask, you know, I don't know, a 45 yard open top roller, which I think is recycled. 45 yards. It's a big thing. It's probably what we have over there, though, is to replace yeah, one that we gave here. Yeah, that'd be. And on the, that's one of the recycling bins. Yeah, so yeah. I just wanted to clarify that. Okay, it let me find out, or, you know, what what the story is on that. So okay. it doesn't appear on the, on the, the capital list that are, So those are, that'll run you in between eight and 10. Okay, so then it's probably on the equipment. 10,000? For raw open? I, I just want to know what eight or ten yeah. is. That. Eight or ten thousand. Yeah. 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 So that would go on. I'm not questioning I mean, your number. Twenty, 20 years ago, they were six grand. So yeah, that's yeah. Okay. So then like my that. other point is. Okay, but let me just clarify. Then that would go on the equipment list because anything yeah. under ten thousand goes on the equipment. Mm -hmm. So it would show up someplace else. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, those are definitely. Okay. okay. My other one is I spoke with CareWorks again this morning, mm -hmm. um, they are still looking for a method on the first Wednesday of the month to be able to bring a lot of cardboard to the transfer station. And they can't get a, um, they're a nonprofit social service agency. Um, they're not going to buy a year long dumpster. I don't know if there's, and I have $20. Here. Give some a recycling. Yeah, but isn't there some? It's only going to be one day a week. No, no. And one day in a month. No. No, it's just you know, to pay forty dollars for a year to get a recycling yeah. sticker. Is there not someone? Oh, I know what that, the problem is. That works for them. That works for them is doesn't live in Kingston. They don't have anyone that works for them that lives in Kingston. That has a truck. No. I mean, they, I, they think it's all volunteer except for the executive right. director. Well, let me ask. So they're based here. All of that. Yeah, they're on Puddle Street. But the question Can't I you want a business is, recycling only permit for forty bucks and just all they need, and and I think you can buy a one day permit for people. Um, can't we do a one day recycling permit for the first Wednesday of the month? Here it is. You can come today. Now you can't come for another thirty one days. Here is a one day for so Wednesday so hard to of the month. Track of. That's so hard. But, but just, 40 bucks, I mean, for a whole year. But you have to be able to put it on a car that has right, right. the capacity to carry all the cardboard that's okay. affiliated with the organization. Yes, it has to be the same video. Yeah. yeah, let me right. ask And Paul. so the problem that they're having is, I think she said, because it's coming tomorrow, mm -hmm. um, somebody was going to be able to take that to Plymouth. But if we're going to pay for it, it would be really great. It's mostly, yeah, it's what does she say? She gets a massive food direct, uh, delivery. So it's all, you know, When you're taking it to Plymouth? Huh? We're taking it to Plymouth? She has somebody who will come and help unload trucks, and they said that tomorrow they can take it down to Plymouth for cardboard recycling. Otherwise, they're putting it behind the church in the dumpster with all the other garbage that gets thrown in a dumpster, Ooh. which makes it not even worth Wait, recycling. Wait, doesn't the church have a recycling bin? Sure, they're required to. Now. Yeah, 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 they're required to have a recycling bin. Pandora's box here. That's it. <laughs> Is this you, you? No, it's the um, Chris, the vineyard. Oh, yeah, all generators in case are required to recycle. Yeah. So that, I mean, I had given you her number to talk to yeah. you to see what kind of solving you could do. Mm -hmm. um, so, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe that's a problem too, but but she just needs the stuff out of here. And um, yeah, I don't I don't know why that's the only solution that's over at the church. But Jean, when we did the regulations, do we do all generators or just those ones? Oh, I thought it said all generators. That's what I, I thought. Can, too. I can check it. I but... think it's about pretty, I'm like 99.9% mm -hmm. .9 sure it says all generators. Yeah. Just churches, offices, industry, everything is supposed to be said. Well, all private haulers are required to provide recycling they don't. services. Yeah, but all generators are required to have a recycling too. So covers everybody. So do you want to take this on from here or with all your <laughs> um, after your healed mental clarity? Yeah, let me let me look into it. Because I think I've given you her number before, but you can reach out to it. me. I have it. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> so maybe we're just send a blast out to all businesses. We've got a business list from. Can we do? Yeah, just saying, hey, just remind everybody, we do have regulations that require all generators to recycle in the town of Kingston. If you don't have one, you better get one because we're getting coming up in soon. Maybe not that hard. out to check your backyards. Yeah, well, some things, and I'm not really sure how you, how you do it, but you need to get out to the to the vendors that people are collecting trash. They're not pretty. They're but not, it's everywhere. There are no two containers. Oh no, I know. They, then the vet and the, the trash holders don't want to do that. To, no, of course the, they don't. To the to the to that's, the that's customer the because of, that's the plan. Yeah, and yeah, we now have a health agent who has been willing to tackle. So it's a letter to the haulers reminding them to send them the regulation or a link to the regulation Which and then done. sending something to at least all the businesses, all the businesses. Okay. because that's one thing. Businesses, churches, you name it, anything that has a business or industry address or Anything's you know nonprofit, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, you know, tackle the residents later, but at least start there because it's, it's a smaller list. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, one of the things that came up on that webinar was that all RDP funds are, have to be in a dedicated account. Yep, that's new. What does that mean for Kingston? I mean, ours is, it's a line item. It's a separate You have account. to create a separate account. What is in a separate account? I don't know if this the line item in an account is going to qualify. That I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't know. Because there's other money in that account under different lines. No, no, no. You... So the RDP funds are in an account all by themselves with no other funds in it. Right. I mean, oh, that's how we get our reports. And then from your fund. <laughs> that's I right. wouldn't worry about it. But... Okay. All right. I mean, if there's if there's a question, Boston will ask. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to ask because I don't have the time in my day to deal with sure. it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the textile recovery is going to be removed as an RDP. Point because it's now mandatory. Yes. Okay. okay, so waste prevention, education, and outreach is going to be the focus. Yeah, curbside recycling regs more focus on that was and the um the recording of that webinar. I think I sent that out to mm -hmm. you guys. You want to take a look at what was the webinar? It was dated uh 1212 and it was on the spring 24 RDP preview. Is it an hour long? Yes, yeah, I think it was an hour. I think it was a half hour, like a half hour questions. Wasn't yeah, it, it yeah. was crazy. A lot of questions, a lot of questions. Well, you're making changes. Yeah, which is good because so once people again, wanted to understand what the changes mean yeah. for them in their community. So once again, this webinar wouldn't have been held until April, which is when they opened the gym. So right, right. I'm glad they did it in December. Yeah. Okay. What else we got on our here? We haven't covered what needs to be covered today. Um, okay. The organic collection. Um, Curbside. Um, black earth composting, which does our pickups. I spoke to their municipal person and she sent me a flyer that we could put up for um, people to sign up. Um, because she wanted us to do all this and I'm like, mm -mm, no. I said, your private business, you're trying to solicit business. Well, you know, this is what other communities have done for us. I said, mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah, know, we're brilliant. not promoting any particular private business. That's, I just don't think that that's kosher. Um, but I said, if you send me a flyer, I'll be happy to have it produced and, and put up, you know, and then it's up to the public if they want to sign up for your business. So that's where we are with the Black Earth. I, I haven't asked Paul Paul if his staff can um, reproduce the flyer. The only place I feel comfortable doing it really is um, on the town bulletin board downstairs. 
Um, I don't think it's something I want to ask the library to do. It's not a town function. I mean, there are other solicitations from private people on that board, so I feel that that's probably the, probably the best place. The best place. And I don't want to put it on the website because, again, it's not a town. It looks like the town's promoting it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you'd have to go up for probably a competitive bid or something, and then you could do like a preferred vendor. Right. But, but that's, you know, that's a process. Yeah. It's a process. I mean, it's expensive, and I'm not sure how many people you know, want to sign up for it. And they need a minimum number in order to. Yeah, make it worth it. Well, I think they came on Friday and picked it up then. I mean, ironically enough, I was looking at that earlier about, you know, food waste. And I was thinking about, you know, if that was in my town, right? So I live in Marston. We've got, we've got, the, we've got the transfer station, which does have a food waste program there, which is Black Earth. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, if I want to do it curbside, right? So it's 10, 15 bucks a week, I think. Whatever. I still have to go to the dump, which means right. I still pay $300 a year for that sticker. If I divert my food waste and I'm paying 10 to 15 bucks a week. More. I still have to pay the $300. That's I don't right. get a discount. That's right. So what, you know, the, private hall. The only incentive is if people don't want to handle the yucky stuff. The incentive is pay as you throw. I know. That's the only way. If we had pay as you throw where I lived, right. I would save so much money because I would take all of that stuff and move it. And you could actually right. see the value, right. which is what we're talking about. Right. See the value. I'm not buying as many bags for three, four, five bucks a pop because it's now going into this thing, which is being picked up and being diverted. Okay. That's the only way it works, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, and it would work well. Yeah. It's so a, I guess we have to hmm. to get a better sense of the the community's willingness to consider a pay as you throw program. As I said before, it really went down in flames, but we had a pretty active opposition group at the time. Mm -hmm. um, we can get some pretty good speakers in about how it saves money. Okay. I'm sure we can get someone from Plimpton. And it's more work, and that's what we don't want. This is just easy to put in that dark plastic bag and throw everything out at once. I know. I, know. I, was, I was in Stop and Shop this week, as I am multiple times a week. But, um, there were people coming over and picking up the bags for Duxbury to, to do their pay as you throw. Yeah. It's not that hard to get the bags. They're right there. I know. <laughs> they're where you go shopping and they're where you fill up with gas and they're where you go to the packy. And, yeah. I just don't know what, you know, how this committee feels about trying to get that on the agenda for the I'm I'm all, I'm all for it. I was at the beginning and I'm just mm -hmm. I'm Always be because it just it makes sense. I I agree. And it, and it, and the other thing is that it also, in some respects, forces those who would rather not do it to 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 make the the effort to put you know so they're saving money. You know, if I could make a recommendation, I would say let's start with some education seminars. Don't get it on the town meeting. Yeah. yeah, no, it's, it's too big of a... Let's, let's do four, five, six of these meetings, either here or on Zoom, at, at the senior center's library, and let's just talk to the public about it and say, look, we're having an information session on what Pays You Throw actually is. Yeah. It's exactly what we did in Clinton. Exactly what we did, and I'll tell you what, after the first meeting, everyone that showed up was all for it. Mm -hmm. All for it. And these are people that were adamant. like They were stout Republicans. They were like, we're not doing anything. We want to throw as much away as possible. By the end of that meeting, an hour in, they were going, we need this because I can now save money. Mm -hmm. You know, well, how much is it? control that to people. That's the thing. That that's 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 it takes work and that's so that we don't want yeah. the control. And you they, guys are they, in they, And they said I was going to get the process. No, and, and, we get proof. We you know, I've got yeah, well, that's proof. And I, th oh. this is going to cost me more than what I'm paying is now. That, so is that the group that keeps on the, the finance committee? But I think, uh, yeah, that was his argument. He was going to end up having to pay more because he had multiple yeah, yeah, and that's, seven, he had, and seven like, family well, household. 
Yeah. Well, well, obviously, he's going to pay more. Right. Yeah. And oh, boy, he got up and spoke against it. He is right now. He has a bargain. That's one person. But he, right. everyone else is paying for his trash. Well, that, yeah. So let's get everyone else because you've got a horde of people that are now paying for his seven his, family his, home. Well, let's, this, let's this, get them around them to you. This is the social business. Oh, I don't care. I would rather pay less. I mean, I'm the first one to. Look, I'm the first one to admit, when I first moved here, I didn't know what Paisley Throw was because we didn't have it in California. Uh -huh. you, you literally had a trash can in your, every single right. house. Every house, was a, every city was a franchise in California. Like, you didn't choose your hauler. Uh -huh. You had one hauler for every single mm -hmm. municipality. Yeah. And that was it. They went out for a bit every year. Yeah. They didn't want 500 trucks going up and down the streets. They didn't want Paisley Throw because every house, actually, when I left, they had three containers. Yard waste, single stream, and trash. Every house. Really? And now they're doing other stuff on top of that. Now they have, like, four and five containers. When I moved out of here, I didn't know what Paisley Throw was. And my first dive into it was actually at Nasa Disposal back when that was still a private company. And we were fighting against it in Dennis because we didn't want Paisley Throw to happen because we knew that people were going to like it. So we fought against it because we wanted them to have a container through the company. We meaning a, a the commercial private company. Yeah. didn't want Paisley Throw in town. Yeah. Because we knew as soon as someone got hooked to it, mm -hmm. they would like it because they would save money. Right. We want to take their money. Right. So when you have someone explain it to them that I was adamantly against it, but now, now looking at my bill, which is $300 at the transfer station, actually it's $340 with the second vehicle because Karen's mm -hmm. brother who lives in her basement now has a sticker too. So I pay for his sticker. Mm -hmm. When I can be paying 100 or less with pays you throw, mm -hmm. And all I'm doing is what I'm doing right now, which is getting right. the material and then right. you're already separate. Just buying. I don't mind buying the bags. I'm going to the grocery store anyway. Exactly. We well, have to buy your trash bag somewhere. Well, there will be 10 cents if we go to job lot. You're right. But you know what? That bag you're not paying for your own disposal. But that bag you're also paying for everyone else's disposal. It's throwing it away. So I don't throw that much away. I'm paying for all of my neighbors in Barnes to Bull. I'm right. subsidizing every one of them. Right. Think I'm happy about that? That's how you get them riled up. I mean, I talked to Barcelo about this when I first went out here. It's like, and I knew one of the reps lived right down the street from me. I'm like, we need Paisley Throw. And he goes, I agree, Todd, but it's never going to pass because nobody wants it. It's like, you're not selling it the right way. <laughs> You've got to be able to explain it. And I really honestly believe the reason we got this passed through Clifton so quickly was those education sessions we had. It's just talking to the public, letting them ask questions. I spent hours answering questions just to alleviate every one of their fears. And it worked. We did a couple. I don't mind doing. Yeah, we did a couple. Yeah, I love doing that kind of stuff. The thing is, if you get ducks, if you get the ducks in the community to pay to throw, which they have been doing for quite a while. Oh, years, yeah. That I mean, talk about climbing a mountain. Yeah. You know, and it was successful. Plimpton's I mean, the mountain climbs, successful. and now it's a just that's the way it is. I mean, Plimpton's trash is down fifty percent. Oh, I believe it. Fifty percent from yeah. day one. It's held strong. Like they are saving more money oh. than they ever thought they could. We thought we were forecasting 35%. They're 50. It's unbelievable. And the residents like it now. That's the thing. <laughs> it only took them like three, four months. They had 10 angry phone calls, 10 out of a population of 980. And that was it. Or house house 980. Yeah, that was it. So anyway, I just, I really honestly believe it's in the education process that we really just start these sessions and we just start the talks. We don't actually tell people we're going to do this. Let's get a feel for the community first. I'm more than happy to come down and do it. I love doing it. I love standing in front of fire. <laughs> Shoot me. Trust me, I'm gonna dodge it. <laughs> but I love doing that kind of stuff. So. All right. Well, we're if if that's a, a decision that this yeah. group makes, if we want to proceed with that, you will definitely be our first call. Thank you. <laughs> I, love, I love stuff like that. I, that makes me happy. I will do a little song and dance and I will answer the questions and We'll get them fired up. Because we did have um, considerable assistance from Ray Zero the last time. So it was not me. Okay. They only use a private company to answer questions. No. It's, it's, um, it's okay. I mean, they helped me with putting everything together and all those. Here's, here's the issue. I've seen their presentations and I've seen how they answer questions mm -hmm. and it doesn't help. It doesn't help. No. Okay. You get someone from the state talking about this stuff and answering the questions. Now it's different. Now it's not private industry trying to steal your money. Now it's the state going, here's why we should do it. So. All right. We need to head out, though. I'm sorry, did I talk to him? No, you didn't. I just, I have.
babies just get that clean. For the fifth, sixth time. Yeah. All right. So, Jean, are you still with us? Jean? Jean? Yeah, okay. All right. Well, we're about to adjourn. I have one quick thing, though. Okay. So, our next meeting is um, February 6th. Um, and you will not be here physically, and I will not be here physically on that date. We will be out of state again. So I don't know if we want to change it, and someone else can set up it or keep it that way, and somebody else will take on setting up all the technology, or change it to a date that I. As long I as I can get a ride here. On the sixth. On the sixth. Oh, it's after surgery. Hmm? It's after your surgery. Mm -hmm. Are you sure you don't want to be in a car? Well, well it's like three weeks out. Yeah. yeah, I mean, all right. I mean, I have a, a walker. I that I requested a, a new walker for Christmas, and I got it. I put it together this weekend. So that's why Christmas was so great. So I'm, I'm good to go. Um, She's up in the yard. It's just you know, it's <laughs> my right leg, way. so I can't. So I can't drive. That's that's the problem. Is I can't drive. So, so we have turns. You know, if if I can get my husband up early enough to. Get over here to drop me. Huh? We do it all Zoom. We can do it Zoom, but someone has to set everything up in this room. Yeah. And um, that's the problem of I would take over if Gene's not coming in. But if I'm not coming in and Gene's not coming in, we don't have a designated person that will get this all set up. Yeah. All usually these are in So, I mean, the sixth is fine. What, what, Gene, say that again? I could give you a ride. If you don't get an emergency, right? <laughs> um, do, is your car big enough to accommodate a knee walker? It's kind of like a small bicycle. It, it can fold up somewhat. Um, well, I, I have a, what, like a, a baggie. Yeah, that has plenty of room in it, but not so I was going to bring the tongue, which is electric and it's a hat sack, so it would okay. fit in a hat sack. Okay, I think it would, but since Vanessa's not going to be here that day, I'm wondering if we should do um, the 13th. That's good. David, was that for 13th? For what? For our next it's meeting. Nice. Yeah, and it's Vanessa can't there. come on the 6th with the VR. Right. But I can attend remotely. I just can't physically be in this room. Well, you let me know which works for you. What do you mean? Oh, for which date? Okay. Depending on when there, you can convince your husband. Well, he's he has B and I on Tuesday mornings, which means he actually gets up early and leaves the house at seven thirty, but he's not back till nine thirty. So, um, Jean, I may very well take you up on that ride. Um, we just need to decide on the date. So Vanessa, okay. you're the you decide. I can do either date. It's fine. I'll be here present on, the on that second date. Yeah, okay. but I will not be in. in you'll, be, you'll be remote. I will. I, I can attend remotely, but I can't okay. physically so be here to set up. Either or as well. Okay. Well, why don't we leave it for the six, and then. then if you want, you can um, attend remotely. Okay. Um, and Jean, did, do we have a date on that now? You gonna pick me up? Yes. What time do you want me to pick you up? Why don't I give you a call? Probably around eight thirty, but I'll give you a call um, before the next meeting. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So now adjourning. I move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. David. Aye. 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 Jean. Okay. Ten forty-nine.